Um, we're going we're gonna to move into our solving our max mode challenges. We're going to go to the first challenge here. This first challenge is, is probably the most complex to demonstrate, but also really shows some value that Rules Manager provides. So um, the first challenge essentially is calculating field or calculating field with automated script impacts performance. And so what happens is the way auto scripts work um, and the way the request was was presented to us was that the users have a non-persistent field called bill cost on the work order table. That bill cost field is populated with an automated script using the, the out-of-the-box Maximo tools that came with Maximo 7.5. Now, the issue is that the script goes through every child in the work, work order's work pack and sums up the cost by adding the actual materials cost, service cost, and uh, uh, labor cost on all of the children and multiplying it by a multiplier, which in our case, for ease sake, we're going to be multiplying it by uh, the work order priority. But here's the, here's the issue. The script executes whenever a work order record is accessed. So what's happening is the script is firing multiple times, even when you're on the list page, when you're opening up a record, and then and some records that you know that you have work orders with multiple children or multiple tasks, the execution is occurring multiple times for that record, and consequently your performance is slowed down. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that really fast. So I'm going to move to Eclipse and connect my instance, and I'll start demonstrating it. So let me open my instance here, and I'm logged in, and I'm going to go to. Uh, the work order tracking application. This is before I have my rule enabled. So when I when I go to actuals, you'll see this bill cost field on the right. Hopefully your screen demonstrates it pretty soon. It's ideally it'll keep up with us. The uh, bill cost field on the right is empty. So now when I go to my automated scripts, I'm going to go ahead and enable this automated script, and then I'll talk you through the script. Um, first, I'll enable it. Set it active and active. Hit OK. And save it now. Let me let me walk you through the script. Um, basically, I'm doing. I'm going through. I'm fetching the work pack set from the the current MBO, which is the current record I'm ac accessing. I'm ignoring the the current record I'm on because what happened was I found I was getting an infinite loop, so I need to skip the record I'm on. Um, I then navigate through those children, sum up the the le actual lab labor cost, the actual material cost, and the actual serve cost. Then I multiply it by this uh, priority multiplier, and I store that total. And then at the end, I add the 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 values for the current record I'm on. So the script is kind of complex, but I mean it, it's it's fairly simple in a way too. I'm just going through the children, getting the cost summing them, multiplying them, and storing that total, and then sending that to the parent record. Um, this section at the bottom is something I, I'll demonstrate that we want to know how often this record is firing, so I'm kind of storing this in a, in a job variable just so we know how many times this, this auto script fires. And uh, I'll demonstrate that as we're going. So now let me go back to work order tracking. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to I'm just going to open up a list of records. I'm also going to show you my log in the background because those print lines are in the log so you can see how often it's fired. So when I just hit enter here, all of those print lines um, that, that are presented to the screen, I know it moves really fast and hopefully it gets relayed to you over the webinar, all of those just fired that existing time. Now when I go to the actuals tab, you'll see I have my bill cost field. So just by doing that, I can get the number of executions. That was 129 times that rule fired. I'm going to go ahead and set it back to zero. So that auto script fired 129 times. Now I'm going to go to a very simple work order, uh, work order number 1244. And this one's you know fairly simple. I look at my oops, I look at my actuals, and then I have my value. And when I get the number of executions, you know it was three. It, Still, that's not that's not too bad. It didn't do, go very slowly. But when I type in record seven thousand, 
I'm going to I'm going to hit enter, and you're going to watch the log in the background down here. You're going to see it fly. Also, it takes it quite a while for this record to open. So I'm I do it. The log is running. The log is running. The log is still running. The record isn't opening yet. And while this is going on, all it's trying to do is calculate that value in the background. But because the way the auto script fires, it fires every time the record's accessed. So it's firing on all of these children. So it took it that long to just open up this record. This record has a few children on it, and their children have children. So the work pack is, is fairly large. But I mean, any system that you guys are using also has large work orders that involve children and tasks. Um, I'm going to go back to the list. Oh, actually, if I view the number of executions, you're going to see now it's up to 1,222. So this script has fired 1,222 times since I started going to this page. In the same way, if I search for 7%, which you, know, you, you don't really want your end users doing that, but you'll see but you see this script is firing in the background. Now let me go ahead and turn that script off and show you the difference with Rules Manager. And, our, and I'll show you our rule itself. First, let me disable the rule, or disable the automated script. Now I'm going to enable a rule on my environment. And so I have this on-field init rule. The way an on-field init rule, oops, yes, I'd like to do that. The way an on-field init rule works is that it fires only when the field is accessed. If I navigate back to our spreadsheet here, or our uh, presentation here, um, here is our solution. So what we did was we created an on-field init rule with Rules Manager to populate the field. Um, the on-field init rule only fires when the user accesses the bill cost attribute, meaning it won't fire on the list page unless you add that field to the list page, which you, you don't necessarily need. Um, it won't fire even if you go to the main page, only when you're on, in this case, the actual page, because that's where that field is displayed on the screen. The, the consequent solution is that the number of times this rule fires is reduced to once per record, regardless of how many records there are in the work order's work pack. So if I navigate back to Eclipse here, let me make sure I've got everything saved. Um, make sure my rule is enabled just in case. So let me show you the rule. It's the exact same syntax as I was using an automated script. Um, I did it like that on purpose so I could demonstrate to you that the difference in time. Like this is the exact same logic. The only difference is I'm using some, in some cases, some rules manager terminology instead of the Java-like programming methods that automated scripting requires. Um, so in the same way, here I am navigating through my set, fetching my records, multiplying it by that multiplier, then doing the same for the individual record at the end. So it's, it's like I said, it's exactly the same type of rule um, that I was firing with the automated script. The difference is now we're not going to have that performance hit on, on our server. So if I go to work order tracking, um, if I navigate to the first record and I go to the, the page directly, you see my rule fired once. Actually, if I reset execution, reset the number of executions, it's back to zero. I'm going to move to the next record in the set. You'll see it populated and the number of executions is now one. When I go back to the previous record, you'll see, the, um, again, I'm, what is it, beating a dead horse, the number of executions is two. Just like I did before, I'm going to open up record 7,000. Actually, I'll navigate to this tab first. So I'm going to open up record 7,000. No? Yeah, I'll navigate to record 7,000 so that you can see that the rule is still only going to fire that one time. And you can watch the log in the bottom to make sure it does not stream a bunch of data as though the auto scripting rule did. So I hit Enter. The record shows up immediately. My value is calculated. So I didn't have to wait 10 seconds to open up a simple record. And the same thing when I go to record 1244, that one was really simple. There's no data involved, so it, it opens it in a, in a snap. So as you can see, what we just did with a very simple rule, like, well, a, very, a rule that mimics exactly what the auto scripting does, is we turned the performance of, for this one user, from when I go to record 1244, that one was really simple. There's no data involved, so it, 
it opens it in a, in a snap. So as you can see, what we just did with a very simple rule, like, well, a, very, a rule that mimics exactly what the auto scripting does, is we turn the performance of, for this one user, from an event that could take up to, what, 10 seconds, down to something that takes a half a second or less which is important for your end users because you want them to accept the system as it is. And they won't do that if it's performing slowly. So that was our first challenge. 